Good morning from Southern Berries, USA. Professor Berry here. Well, we've got some lab work to do today. We're going to need to do a chemical analysis of the soil in the field and make sure that we're meeting the nutritional needs of those plants. This is really important because if we don't do this, we can find ourselves in a situation of our plants are just sitting and just don't seem to be getting any better. So let's get started. To test our soil today, we're going to be using the Rapid Test Digital Soil Test Kit. And when you open this up, first thing you're going to notice is you have some instructions, so we're going to pay attention to those. We have a suction tube for putting the samples into the vials. We have our capsules that we'll use for testing the pH, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the potash. We have our test tubes that we'll put the samples in. And when we're finished, we have our soil tester that's going to tell us the results. Okay, now I've come out to one of my rows and we're going to go through the process of getting a sample and I just noticed that I've got a little guy that's growing up right here out of the uh, out of that plant. Oh, there's one over on the other side as well. Those are really good. Which, By the way the time of year right now is uh, this is right at the end of January. So in any case what I want to do is I want to rake the soil back I don't want to have any mulch in my sample. So I'm going to dig the hole out and get that material out of the way. I want to get the hole down at least a good six inches. And one of the things I want to try and avoid also is having roots or any other debris in the sample. So now that I've done that, I'm going to reach down and dig out and there we are. That's what we're going to use for our sample. Now, I also go throughout the field, and I want to get at least a dozen samples out of this field and uh, combine those together and see what we have to do in order to make things work. Now, the first step in the process is to prepare our sample to be tested. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the soil and we're going to mix one cup of soil to five cups of distilled water. And once that's done, we want to stir this up really well. Or if you have a container that can be shaken, you want to do that. Now once that's done, you want to let this just sit until the sediment falls to the bottom. That may take a few hours, it may take 24 hours. I usually just let mine sit overnight. Now the first test we're going to conduct is the test for pH. This is especially important for blueberries because we want to have a low pH and if we could get something in the neighborhood of about 5, 4.4, we would be really good. This test is done a little bit different than the test for the nitrogen, potash, and phosphorus. So here we go. Select the tube with the green vial and from the soil that you've collected, what we want to do is we want to fill that up to the first line with the soil. Just a little bit more. Very good. Now, we want to use distilled water and using the eyedropper, we're going to pull up enough water to fill it all the way to the top. Thank you. 
There we go, up to the fourth line. So now let's put the green cap on and we're going to shake this really, really well for a minute or so here. You want to get all that stirred up in there quite well. Now, we want to add to it the green capsule. Now I've noticed a lot of times that these things can be very difficult to open, so what I do is I cheat. I take a pair of scissors and cut the top off of it, and then drop that down into the tube. You want to be sure and get it all in there. Now once again put the lid back on it and let's shake it up really really well. Now we're going to test this with our soil tester and this is going to come out and give us a pretty good result of what we're going to have. So now once this is done We'll just put it in our holder, and I've already preset the timer for two minutes. So let's let it run for two minutes, and then let's see what our results are. Okay, our two minutes are up. So we can look at the tube, and we see that things have settled down pretty good. And now what we want to do is we want to slide this into the tester and push the button that indicates that level and it's indicating a pH of 5.0. That's very good for blueberries. Now the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash test are all conducted the same. Select the appropriate colored cap. In this situation I'm going to do the nitrogen first and remove the cap. Now I'm going to put the material in first. So we put the, break open the purple capsule and we put that into the vial. Now we want to take our material that we've mixed up and we want to be real careful. We don't want to get any sediment mixed in with this. We want to do the best we can and get the water out only. So and as we do that, we want to fill this up to the fourth mark on the tube. Almost there. Okay, very good. Now one of the difference here is, is that the last, when we did the pH, we let it go for two minutes. This time we want to let the test run for 10 minutes. And we want to mix this up really, really well. And like I said, all of the tests for the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash are done the same way. So we'll mix this up real good. Okay, that looks good. Now we're just going to let that set for 10 minutes. Okay, our 10 minutes is up and it's been time now. So we're going to take the tube for the nitrogen and we're going to slip it into the tester and push the end. And that comes up indicating that the nitrogen level is sufficient. Now one of the things that's really important with these next three tests is that we do not let them go over 10 minutes. That's important. Okay, it's time to test the sample for the phosphorus. So once again, just slip it into the tester, push the amount for phosphorus, and it's showing that this is deficient. So this means that I'm going to need to add some amenities to the soil in my field to keep my plants healthy. 
Okay, timer's up for our potash. So let's take the vial, slip it into the tester, and we're going to push the results for potash. And this is showing adequate. So I'm going to indicate that. And we're going to look at these values and see what it all means. Well, I do take this blueberry stuff quite serious, and I also have my test results back from Clemson University that they ran. And I wanted to make sure that the sh test results that I do myself are at least ways pretty much in the neighborhood and close to what are done by a test laboratory such as uh, Clemson University or any university ag department that you may have in your state. Clemson came back and showing that my soil pH was 5.4. On our test it came back 5.0. The other three, the phosphorus, the nitrogen, and the potash, pretty much came back all the same. Uh, my test showed uh, that it was sufficient in nitrogen, and that shows on the Clemson test results as well. Had a deficiency in phosphorus, and the test at Clemson matches up very well with that, says that that is also low. The last was the potash, and my test showed that it was adequate or slightly below the need of the uh, plants. And the Clemson University came out the same as well. I think these tests are good that we do ourselves. It gives us an opportunity to know fairly quickly basically what's going on in the soil around our plants. But then, if you have an ag department in a university near you, you really should tap into them. Uh, they uh, can give you a lot more information. One of the things that the Clemson University test came back and showed me was one, when I submitted my samples to them, I clicked in the code for blueberries. So that's what they base their whole analysis on. And one of the nice things about it is, is they came back and showed me exactly what I need to bring my levels up to where they should be. For example, it gives me the recommendations for pounds per acre. And then also I have the conversion here, which is what I really need, and not so much pounds per acre, but how much I need to put down per row pounds per row. So they give me the conversion for that and that's quite helpful as well. So how do we put all this to use? Well first let's break up our nutrients into three categories. We have primary, secondary, and our micronutrients that we have to take into consideration for the plants. The primary nutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These are the main ones and the ones that we really work towards putting out into our field or around our plants to make sure that they're healthy. Our secondary nutrients are calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. These, of course, are in lesser quantities, but it's something that we have to consider when we want to keep our plants healthy. Our micronutrients are basically found in zinc, copper, magnesium, and boron. These make up pretty much what we also need to fill in the blanks. And for the most part, if you have the pH right in the field, then you don't have to worry about the micronutrients quite as much. Well, by having completed the soil test by doing our own, plus following up with the soil test from the university, I feel very comfortable now about what I need to do out in the field to get the nutrient levels of my plants to where they should be. Well, it's coming to the end of the day here at Southern Berries USA. If you have any questions, you can contact me, Tim at berriesusa.com or go to southernberriesusa.com for information on blueberry and blackberry plants, soil testing kits, and anything you'd want to know about being a successful blueberry farmer.